It's time for another spooky adventure with Haunted History. Our next haunted history story is about the ghost of a woman named Betty Knox. Uh, this story actually takes place in Dunbar, Pennsylvania, in Fayette uh, County. And its story starts back in 1842 on the ridge of the Dunbar Mountains. There, there was a rough farm at Kentucky Knob. Uh, Betty Knox was born. She was the only child her parents would have. And much like the difficult land that they worked, Farming life had many hardships. Uh, these mountain farms, uh, where I grew up in Greenpoint, it wasn't as mountainous as this, but you know the land was much more rocky. It was much uh, harder to farm. It wasn't like the lowlands that in the valleys where the the land was much more fertile. This was very hard life, and especially in an area where they're talking about in Dunbar, it was it was rough. And her parents worked very, very hard, and from a young age, um, she was working with them. But at three, her mother died from consumption, because out there as well, unfortunately, people, you know, not only was it a hard life work-wise, but you really didn't make a whole lot. So they couldn't really afford doctors, and the mother got consumption, which in most cases, it was virtually untreatable. And unfortunately she passed away because you know the doctors weren't able to do anything for her so her father raised uh young betty the best that he could and uh as time passed she became a strong and skilled mountain farmer uh she was able to perform the work of any man and her father relied heavily upon her uh to perform the tasks that would make the farm run properly uh as i said 19th century farming life was difficult to say the least uh, but she was responsible for and assisted with clearing the land, plowing, planting, weeding, and reaping. And between the larger tasks, she found time to raise livestock, livestock and cook. It was said that Betty grew into a very beautiful young woman with long auburn hair, a fair complexion, and blue eyes. And, of course, all the other uh, farmers in the area were quite attracted to her. And, and the fact that she was such a hard worker and such a great farmer made her the prize lady of the, that area of Dunbar. And uh, one after another would, would pursue her, but she just wasn't having it. She rejected their advances, and she, she wanted to wait for someone that she truly loved. Uh, she truly was a remarkable uh, woman. Uh, unfortunately, in her 17th year, there was a freak timber cutting accident that took the life of her father. So this tragedy left Betty alone on the mountain. Uh, <coughs> but farming was her life, and she wouldn't abandon the homestead. So she continued to farm that land, and to supplement her income, she would uh, take uh, the grain from her neighbors and take it over to the mill in Ferguson uh, Hollow and then would come back uh, with the flour. It was about a 25 mile trip and it was it was a whole day and uh, she sort of followed this same path over and over and over again and that path you can still find today uh, and there's actually a park called Betty Knox Park that exists in the state game lands. And it's on a level piece of land where she would travel uh, near the Dunbar Creek. Uh, and there's also uh, nearby, there's a spring where she frequently rested on her long journey to make its clean water more accessible. She actually lined it with stones. Uh, now, I'm not sure if the spring's still, I'm sure the spring's still there, whether the stones are there anymore. But they said there are places there where you can see where the path was. Uh, 
She did, though, eventually encounter one man with whom she became enamored. Now, unfortunately, like many other things in her life, it was a situation that ended tragically. Uh, on one fall evening in 1862, during the Civil War, Betty came upon a wounded soldier on her return trip from the grist mill. Now, this young man was wounded, and it looked like he had actually deserted the Union Arm Army and wandered north into Fayette County. Uh, he was seriously wounded and delirious from the fever, and Betty took pity on him and took him back to her farm. Now, she hid him from any unknown visitors, and she did her best to try to nurse him back to health, and she developed very strong feelings for him. Now, unfortunately, he just never really recovered from his injuries, and the harsh mountain winter didn't help the situation, and eventually he succumbed to his wounds. She wound up burying him near her father's grave on Kentucky Knob. Uh, following the death of the soldier, she continued her daily trips over the mountains, and she became quite known amongst uh, the people of the region in the coming years, especially during harvest. Uh, she was welcomed by all, and she, but she kept a reserved distance. Uh, her persistent and dedicated hard work earned her the respect of her neighbors and of the gristmill owners. But this is where the story turns into a mystery. Sometime in 1878, Betty Knox's famous mill trips came to an abrupt end. Betty Knox vanished without a trace. So the local farmers began to notice that she wasn't around, and they formed a posse, went out to her farm expecting to find her there. They sort of assumed that she took ill, and she was nowhere to be found. They then, a uh, search party was formed, assembled and scour the nearby woods and her trail to the grist mill. They still, they found no clue to her whereabouts. Uh, so they sort of assumed that either she had been attacked by a scorned lover or a wild animal had dragged her off into the wilderness. Uh, others thought maybe she had left willingly out of loneliness. Uh, but the mystery deepened following the following spring when some children made a startling discovery while out in the woods. Chained to a tree, they found the skeleton of an ox. This was highly unusual because the spot had been searched thoroughly months before. No one had reported seeing a chained ox, and Betty was never known to use a chain to lead her oxen. Whatever happened to the ox, many of the local farmers believed that the animal had belonged to Betty. Now, they never were able to prove that, but that's sort of what they assumed. Now, they still were never able to find any trace of her. The thing that's unusual about this is it said now whether this is just the locals sort of adding to the legend or whether it's actually true they said from time to time you'll see the ghostly form of a woman following this trail that she took to the grist mill sometimes you'll see this ghostly figure leading an oxen they said sometimes you can just hear out in the woods you can hear this oxen and this woman walking along this trail and says especially you'll see this ghost of her at the crossing uh, at the Dunbar Creek um, and then occasionally you'll see I believe it's at the Dunbar Creek as well you'll hear actually you'll you'll see this fallen soldier either following her or you'll hear somebody saying Betty Knox Betty Knox Betty Knox so whether uh, Betty Knox is still going back and forth on this trail, whatever happened to her, nobody knows. It's one of those mysterious missing persons cases that was just never discovered, you know, what had actually happened. She was never found. Body was never found anything. Um, whether the fallen soldier and there was a, an actual love between them, that he follows her ghostly figure through those woods uh, in the Dunbar Mountains, we'll never know. We'll never know what happened to her, but she was certainly a courageous and hardworking and extraordinary woman and uh, should be remembered. So this is the story of Betty Knox in Dunbar Mountains. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you all about town.